So I want to begin with a story about a guy named Michael. So Michael was born into a middle-class American family. When he was 15, he revealed to his parents that he was gay. He was kicked out of his home, and with little options remaining, he began selling his body. Harry, 35 years old, gave Michael food and shelter in exchange for sex. But then he demanded that Michael exchange sex for cash with others, which Harry pocketed. When Michael tried to leave, Harry would beat him and threaten to kill him if he did not continue to do what he said. Now, let's go to a story about Maria. Maria was born into poverty in Mexico. In order to provide for her family, at age 16, she took an opportunity to work as a waitress in America. After she was smuggled over the border, she was told by her smuggler that what she paid for transportation wouldn't be enough and that she would have to work to pay off her debt. But as much as she worked, her debt grew. She worked to live 15-hour days, seven days a week, making nothing for herself. She knew if she tried to run away, she could be caught or deported. Two different people of two different backgrounds, but two things in common. Both were victims of human trafficking, and both were victims of human trafficking here in Houston. Houston has a major human trafficking problem. Modern day slavery is a real issue, and it's a serious problem today globally. It exists right here in the city in which we live. This industry generates $32 billion a year, and it's the second largest criminal industry in the world, only after drug trafficking. The average cost of a slave around the world is $90. Here in the US, there's an average of 15,000 people trafficked into the country every year. 41% of all sex trafficking victims and 20% of all labor trafficking victims are US citizens. Texas is one of the top states with the highest rates of human trafficking in the U.S. One-fourth of all trafficking victims are found in Texas. But most significantly, Houston is a major hub for human trafficking because of its size, population, and its location. It's the fourth largest city in the U.S., and it's the largest city in Texas. Including the greater Houston area, the city's population reaches over six million people with huge numbers of multicultural diversity and as well as large Hispanic, Asian, and Middle Eastern communities. There are over 90 languages spoken in Houston, making traffickers easily able to assimilate themselves and their victims into the surrounding populations. Not only that, but Houston's location is in close proximity to major, two major airports, Bush and Hobby, as well as the Port of Houston, allowing access to the Gulf of Mexico, as well as I-10, which goes straight through Houston, stretching all the way to California in the west and Florida in the east, which are the, also the two major human trafficking states in the US. From I-10, you can get to I-35, reaching to the border of Mexico, only 350 miles away, all the way north to Minnesota. Thus, traffickers have many options on how to move and transport their victims. But on a more positive note, in 2003, Texas was the first state to pass legislation criminalizing human trafficking. In March of 2015, the Texas House passed an yet another set of anti-trafficking laws that could go into effect in September. It's been over 10 years, but the change may seem slow, but progress is happening. When I think about the sheer severity of the problem of human trafficking here in Houston, it's, it, it's, it's, sorry. Um, as one person, sometimes I feel like I won't be able to make a difference in such a huge issue, but I encourage myself to remember that not one person can do everything but one person can do something. The action we take now matters. And telling just one person about the issue makes a difference. If we get the ball rolling, progress will happen. You too can play a part in the fight against human trafficking. You can help identify human trafficking victims by asking yourself these questions. Is the individual 
accompanied by a controlling or controlling person or boss? And do they speak on their own behalf? Does the individual have no control over their personal schedule, money, ID, or travel documents? Are they transported to and from their work, or do they live and work in the same place? And do they have debt owed to their employer? If you recognize any of these signs, you can help by contacting the Human Trafficking Resource Hotline. So my interest in human trafficking began when I was 13 years old. And joining this movement has affected my life profoundly because here I am five years later still fighting against this issue, letting you all know that we can make a difference in our lifetime, even starting from a young age. It is the younger generations, it is the younger generations who will spur change in this city, in this world, so much so that way in the future, you will still be surprised at what a high school senior knows and what they can do. Thank you.